Do you know where this noble wanted to meet us? I do. The Comte Boisvert invited us to his mansion, not far from here. I pray he clears up the deaths of my messengers, as promised. Lead the way. Welcome, my friend. Thank you for seeing us, Comte Boisvert. The honor is mine. Please, sit. It's an honor to assist two such distinguished guests. Please, tell us what you know. Straight to business, then. After the murder of Lady Montilly's people, I don't suppose I can blame you. Have you heard of the House of Repose? The Assassin's League? My contacts obtained a copy of a document in the archive. Contract for a life. The House of Repose is hereby sworn to eliminate anyone attempting to overturn the Montelier's trading exile in Orlais. Who's sending these assassins? The contract was signed by a noble family. The Du Paraquettes. But the Du Paraquettes died out as a noble line over 60 years ago. Indeed. But the contract was signed 109 years ago. How can a family try to kill you after they died out? The Du Paraquettes were our rivals. They drove the Montelliers from Val Royale. This contract was drawn up over a hundred years ago, but it wasn't invoked until I tried to overturn my family's exile. Unpleasant though it may be, the House of Repose is merely fulfilling its contractual duties. If the people who wanted your family dead are gone, why are the assassins still after you? A contract is a contract, Inquisitor. Orlesian businesses live and die by their reputations. The entire guild's welfare would be endangered if an agreement was tossed aside on a whim of time or fate. She's quite right, Your Worship. The House of Repose is doing what it feels necessary. By its standards. I assume you have a thought or two on this, Josephine? The Du Paraquettes still have descendants under the common branch. If we elevate them to nobility, a Du Paraquette could annul the contract on my life. Uh, that will take time, Lady Montelier. Time during which the House of Repose will be obliged to haunt you. Will they now? You are exceedingly well informed. You are not to have said you would heard rumors at best. A bit of subterfuge. This contract on your life is an ugly business. One the House of Repose deeply regrets. But this is Orle. Even an assassin's word is his bond. Does Comte Boisvert actually exist? Absolutely. The Comte's offer to reveal the killers of Lady Montilly's messengers was genuine. So was his information somehow. An end to be tied up later. The House of Repose has some nerve sending a killer to greet us. Hardly anyone in the League isn't trained for this, Inquisitor. The contract on Lady Montilly's life is so unusual, we felt the courtesy of an explanation was in order. It is appreciated, Monsieur. Your idea to seek out Du Paraquet to revoke our orders is uh, an interesting one. I wish you luck. I did not come to shed blood today, Inquisitor. Only to speak. Might I pass? Why warn us about your contract and let us go? In Orlais, it is only decent to inform those involved in a contract when extraordinary circumstances conspire. And the Guild's reputation would suffer if you ignored the contract. I quite understand. Thank you, Emily. May we conclude with my departure? Not on your life. As you wish.
I shall keep it in mind. Let's discuss this problem in safety, Inquisitor, at Skyhold. Do you hear something? Mm. Oh, goodness. Uh, Comte Poivre, is that you? Mm. Oh, the lock's been broken off. We'll find a saw. Mm. I realize the cabinet is quite valuable, Comte, but surely... A locksmith, then? As you wish. I'm so sorry, Inquisitor. I never thought my family's trading status would trap us in an assassin's plot. What's done is done. We must deal with this House of Repose before they come again. Yes. Yes, of course. I've tracked down the last two paraquets. If they become gentry, they can annul the contract on my life. We'll require a noble from Val Royaux to sponsor them, a judge to provide documents, a minister to ratify them. It's so like you to take the longest course of action, even when your life is at stake. I assume you already know everything about this mess. There is a faster way, Josephine. The original contract on your life is in the vaults of the House of Repose. If my agents infiltrate it and destroy the original, the assassin will have no obligation to chase you. Liliana, please. I want no more bloodshed over a personal affair. Don't be so stubborn, Josie. How long will it take you to gather these favors in Val Royaux? We can solve this without more deaths on either side. My people are ready, should you change your mind. I'll post a watch on our ambassador in case the House of Repose visits. I appreciate it, but I still believe elevating the Duparakets will solve this. First, we need to perform some favors in Varwayo. I'd be happy to discuss where we could begin. Any news on the House of Repose, Inquisitor? How exactly does one turn farmers into members of the upper classes? There are procedures for granting honored citizens of the Empire the title of Lord or Lady. Very long procedures. And so much paperwork. I've called in a substantial number of favors just to cut through half of it. Why did the Duparakets hate the Montilliers so much they set up a permanent assassination watch? A Montillier and a Duparaket fell in love. A young couple, pledged elsewhere, attempted to elope. The whole thing ended so violently, it's a wonder any survived. It's fortunate the Duparakets' descendants hold no grudges. What if the Duparakets refuse to aid you? I've already contacted the Duparakets, Inquisitor. They're ready to help us. It will be a long road, but a lordship is a chance to restore a proud lineage to their heirs. Besides, I've promised them a heavy bag of coin once this is over. Are you sure the House of Repose will forget this assassin contract on a farmer's signature? It's perfectly legal. In Valroyo's noble circles, a written word is a bond. Besides, the guild would never risk being so unspeakably crass. These assassins are afraid of being seen as impolite. Breaking one's public oath or bond implies a certain... poverty in our life. A common merchant may lack the resources or manners to fulfill a debt, but among the guilds, it would be shameful. You said I'd have to do some favors in Val Royaux if we want to make the Duparakets lords. The Countess Dion is our first step. Her lover, a mage from the White Spire, is missing. Bring her news of him and she'll be very amenable to sponsoring the Duparakets as lords.
Inquisitor. I should inspect the condition of the trebuchets. They must be calibrated to reach the proper range. Again? How many times will you be doing that? Inquisitor. I appreciate the warning, but you shouldn't have come yourself. What if the guild found out, or... What's his name? Are you worrying for me or for yourself? A little of column A, a little of column B. I am the expendable one, after all. Oh, <laughs> don't worry, I'll protect you. We'll just have to... Well, this is a surprise. You're the Inquisitor, right? Bianca Davry, at your service. Your name is Bianca? It's a common name. Half the girls in the Merchant's Guild are named Bianca. The other half are named Helga. I lucked out. I take it you're a friend of Variks. Who isn't a friend of Variks? You have met him before, right? What were you talking about? Bianca's got a lead on where Corypheus got his red lyrium. The site of Bartrand's folly, the tag Varric found, has been leaked. There's a deep roads entrance crawling with strange humans carting out red lyrium by the handful. How do we know they're not using multiple entrances to get to the Taig? Navigating the deep roads isn't like the surface. There's no accurate maps of the whole system, and there are cave-ins, dark spawn, lava floods. If you find a route that gets where you're going, you don't deviate. Trying to find another way could be deadly. Who could have given away the Taig's location? There were a few people who knew. Hirelings from the expedition, a couple of close friends. How they found out isn't important. What matters is we know where they are now. If it's such a secret, how do you know about it, Bianca? I told her. Right after the expedition, I wrote and told Bianca what we found. I had artifacts that needed buyers, and she had more contacts that would pay for them. Plus, I owed her. You can get there from Orlais. It's a long way to the free marches. The deep roads are all connected, or they used to be. Collapses and such, some of them on purpose. They really are roads. They spanned the Dwarven Empire, went to every corner of the continent, maybe further. In theory, you can get to any Taig using the deep roads, but in practice, well, there's a reason nobody uses them anymore. We need to deal with this. As long as he has this source, Corypheus is that much more powerful. I couldn't agree more. I'll keep an eye on their operation. If you're interested in shutting it down, you've got my help. Try not to leave me waiting too long, Varric. I've got my own work to do, you know. Right. That's not going to be trouble at all. Let me know when you want to head to the entrance. What can I do for you, your inquisitorialness? Tell me the truth, Varric. Do you actually think I was sent by Andraste? Oh, shit. This is going to be awkward. I guess I do. Either you're guided by the hand of some higher power, or you have the worst luck. I wouldn't have pegged you as an Andrastean. It's a great story. It's got heroism, love, betrayal, and random musical numbers. What's not to like? I don't have a nug in this race. It could be bullshit, it could be true. I'll never know. But I like the idea that maybe you could save the world with a song. Why are those my only options? Look at all the shit that's happened to you. You were saved from the explosion that leveled a mountaintop and fell out of the Fade. You traveled through time, faced down one of the ancient magisters who started the Blights, had a mountain fall on you, and lived, stopped an army of demons. One of those things would be impossible. All of them together? That's a miracle. 
I'm starting to see your point. Just try to warn me before falling into the Fade again, would you? I hate that place. Need something? Or are you just here to admire the dwarf? Carry on. Need something? Or are you just here to admire the dwarf? About that lead of yours, Varric. Sure. The sooner we take care of it, the better. Do you think this lead of hers is real? Bianca's too much of a researcher to pass me information without verifying it first. But if you're asking whether she'd lie to us, maybe set us up, it's possible. Not likely, though. She risked the wrath of the guild coming in person. A message would have sufficed. Whatever she found in that entrance shook her up. That worries me. Carry on. Adamant's influence continues, your worship. I submit Lord Livius Erimond of Virantium, who remains loyal to Corypheus. We found him alive, offering extreme resistance, likely because the Order will ask for his head. In more colorful terms. To say nothing of justice you might personally require for what was suffered in the Fade. Many places felt the pain of adamant. You will answer for a great deal. I recognize none of this proceeding. You have no authority to judge me. On the contrary, many officials have communicated that they will defer to the Inquisitor on this matter. Because they fear, not just Corypheus, but Tebenta, rightful ruler of every piece of ground ye trod in your pathetic life. I serve the living God. Bring down your blades and free me from the physical. Glory awaits me. You are the worst of us. The damage you have done is beyond all reckoning. A mage's crime, a mage's punishment. Lord Livius Eremond of Arantium, I deny you death. Tranquility. You... You cannot! I am a lord, you pissads! I will not lose myself! Another of the lingering pains of Adamant, your worship. Sir Ruth is a senior warden of the Order. She was one of the many who slit the throat of another to bind a demon. She does not contest this. In fact, she surrendered to us. She requests no mercy. She wants the public justice of the Headman's Axe. You're very serious about this. Is more death the answer? There is no excuse for my actions. I murdered another of the Order. That blood marks me more than the Blight ever could. Accepting their actions while thralls of Corypheus, many treaties allow wardens any extreme if it opposes the Blight. I can't do it. I can't use the greater good to justify my crimes, as if it would create a future I could be a part of. It is wrong that this broke me. I've done worse with full sanction. I can do nothing except be an example of the cost. The Inquisition stands for faith. Our work has greater purpose. Sometimes we need a reminder. Sir Ruth, the Herald of Andraste forgives you in her name. Find peace in that. Your Worship, I... I will try. Mayor Gregory Dedrick of Crestwood is present for betraying his own constituents. He confesses that, ten years ago, he flooded Old Crestwood to kill refugees and villagers touched by the Blight. 
The mayor claims it was to spare the rest of Crestwood, but we only have his word. If the mayor has anything to say in his defense, let him speak. There's no cure for the blight. But I couldn't convince anyone to leave a sick child or husband behind. So you herded the infected into one place and flooded old Crestwood? Were no innocents caught in the waters? Nearly everyone in the village had the blight, I swear it. Have mercy. I couldn't tell the survivors I'd drowned their own families to save them. I, I, I couldn't. You committed murder on Ferelden's soil. Let them deal with your punishment. Send him to Denerim. He can live the rest of his life behind their bars. In prison? Maker. I should have drowned with them. I wanted to thank you. When you came to see me, if there's anything... This sounded much better in my head. I trust you're feeling better? I... Yes. Is it always that bad? The pain comes and goes. Sometimes I feel as if I'm back there. I should not have pushed myself so far that day. Just try to be more careful from now on. Of course. I've never told anyone what truly happened to me at Ferelden's Circle. I was not myself after that. I was angry. For years, that anger blinded me. I'm not proud of the man that made me. Now I can put some distance between myself and everything that happened. It's a start. For what it's worth, I like who you are now. Even after? I'm serious. What about you? You have troubles of your own. How are you holding on? I've met good people here. Knowing they have my back, it helps. You certainly keep interesting company. I suppose I do as well. from the Enchanter as the candle lights. The walls are safe. She will never be hungry again. I found the amulet that Solas told us about. Would you like to try it on? Yes, but not here. I like it here. We need some place that can go away if it becomes sharp. What do I do with it? You found one of the amulets. Excellent. May I? It is simple enough. You put it on, I charge it with magic, and you should be protected. We know it's not just going to work, right? It never just works. Have faith, Inquisitor. that oh for what are you doing to the kid stopping blood mages from binding me like the demons at adamant but it didn't work something is interfering with the enchantment something like cole not being a demon solus 
Is it possible that the amulet doesn't work on Cole because he's too... human? Regardless of Cole's special circumstances, he remains a spirit. Yes, a spirit who is strangely like a person. I don't matter. Just lock away the parts of me that someone else could knot together to make me follow. Focus on the amulet. Tell me what you feel. Warm, soft blanket covering, but it catches tears. I'm the wrong shape. There's uh, something. There. That way. We'll find whatever is preventing the amulet from working, and we'll make it right. All right, kid. Get Cullen and work with him on the map to figure out where you're sensing something wrong. Will you come with me? All of you? Sure. All right, I get it. You like spirits. But he came into this world to be a person. Let him be one. All I care about is making certain that the Venatori can't bind Cole. Fair enough. But that ritual of theirs only works on demons, right? This is not some fanciful story, child of the stone. We cannot change our nature by wishing. You don't think? However we deal with the problem, our next step is to track down whatever is interfering with the enchantment. Yeah, this should get me through the month. Now give me a moment. Greetings. Can I help you? You... You killed me! What? I don't... I don't even know you. You forgot! You locked me in the dungeon in the Spire, and you forgot, and I died in the dark! The, the Spire? Cole, stop! Just take it easy, kid. He killed me! He killed me! That's why it doesn't work! He killed me, and I have to kill him back! Before anyone gets killed, I need to know what's going on. Cole, this man cannot have killed you. You are a spirit. You have not even possessed a body. A broken body, bloody, banged on the stone cell, guts gripping in the dark, dank. A captured apostate. They threw him into the dungeon in the spire at Val Royo. They forgot about him. He starved to death. I came through to help. And I couldn't, so I became him. Cole. If Cole was an apostate, that'd make the guy we just saw a Templar. Must have been buying lyrium. Let me kill him. I need to... I need to. Solus? We cannot let Cole kill the man. I don't think anyone was going to suggest that, Chuckles. Cole is a spirit. The death of the real Cole wounded him, perverted him from his purpose. To regain that part of himself, he must forgive. Come on. You don't just forgive someone killing you. You don't. A spirit can. Varric. The kid's angry. He needs to work through it. The spirit does not work through emotions. It embodies them. But he isn't a spirit, is he? He made himself human. And humans change. They, they get hurt. And they heal. He needs to work it out like a person. You would alter the essence of what he is. He did that to himself when he left the Fade. I'm just helping him survive it. Before I decide anything, I need a clearer picture of what happened. 
It seems the real Cole was an apostate, captured and taken to the Circle by Templars. Who aren't known for their gentle nature. As the young man starved to death in a dungeon, his pain caught the attention of a spirit, likely one of compassion. Compassion? An uncommon spirit, certainly, and all too fragile when its efforts to help proved to be in vain. Cole needs to let this go. I believe I can help. Cole, come with me. Not possible. Not possible. Can you feel this man's pain, Cole? He remembers now. He knows he killed me. No. Feel his pain. His guilt. The shame that drove him from the Templars. Don't worry, we'll erase his records. They clap me on the shoulder, smell of oiled metal and blood. They smile like Louis did when he made me drown the kittens. Laughter bounces off the walls like a thin child's fist. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. He's hurting, Cole. And you are a spirit of compassion. Forget. <laughs> I believe we are finished here. You all right, kid? Yes. He's free. We're both free. It appears to be working. Cole should be adequately protected. Have you talked to him since? Have you heard what he sounds like? He sounds like a spirit. Nonsense words, like Bartrand at the end. Just need to hear the song again, just for a minute. I'm all right, Varric. What matters is his happiness. Cole, how are you feeling? I am well. There is work. Wounded to help, hurts to heal, but the weight is off. The old chains have fallen. You're not still angry with the man who hurt you? No, I helped him forget. His pain no longer pulls at me. A woman with two names slips a knife in darkness to her left hand. Honey stirred into Leliana's wine. Faith, not revenge. Could have been a person. Possibly. Would that have made him happier, Child of the Stone? Any news on the House of Repose, Inquisitor? What's the next favor we need to get these Duparacats a lordship? We need a judge of the royal court to procure documents acknowledging them as nobility again.
Crestwood has had no further trouble with the undead. After what happened, it will take time for the village to recover. A captain sent back sketches of the walls. Our experts say they look elven. Interesting. Does Corypheus send scholars to find something the elves buried? Or something buried with them? I've already found the remains of the people who died in Old Crestwood. That's it, Andraste. I didn't imagine you'd look yourself. Thank you for your thoughtfulness. It is all too rare these days. I will prepare the bodies for cremation. Any Venatori activity? If my agents find anything, you will be the first to know. Any news on the House of Repose, Inquisitor? What's the next favor we need to get these Duparakats a lordship? We must persuade Minister Belize to ratify the papers. She's in charge of these matters of rank. The Minister will be at a small fete thrown by the Marquis Wiscott. I'll get you an invitation. Inquisitor. With rifts contained in the area, we can send in smaller groups to offer relief. I agree. Are you well? A headache. Nothing more. Sarah? Hiya! Who's that? Teetness! Listen, I got you a hat, but it's ugly, so I drew Criffy wants its face on it and stuffed it with apples. Everyone's hitting it with sticks! I really hope you like it. <laughs> We're giving gifts now. I want to get Sarah something to show I'm serious. Thoughts on the right gift? So, you and her, huh? <laughs> nice. But you're right. It's hard to say what she'd want that she hasn't just taken and gotten bored with already. I'm drawing a blank. I'd offer positions or something, but I play a power game, and she's all about the limber. <laughs> nice catch, though, boss. Good on ya. At your order. Inquisitor? 
Is there anything I should know? Many of our recruits viewed the Grey Wardens as heroes. Blackwall's presence is helpful. Knowing there's one Warden immune to corruption has given people hope. Corypheus's grasp is not inescapable. May I ask you something? Of course. Do you think Templars should cease to exist? No. I may have chosen to leave that life, but I respect those who remain. Magic ungoverned could tear the world apart. It's doing so now. Templars are trained and able to confront such dangers. What would you suggest? Some call the Circle a prison that can only breed resentment. Perhaps opportunities to work outside the Circle. A mixed military service or healer's clinics with Templar support. And there must be a safer way for Templars to leave. Templars can lose their memories to Lyrium. Some call it a gift, to forget the failed harrowings, the demons. Some atrocities haunt me still. But to lose what good I can recall, I nearly lost my mind once. It is no gift. Do you think that could work? Would people accept it? Mages would be watched, but could pursue interests outside the Circle. Neither freedom nor prison. I don't know. You still regret the man you became after leaving Ferelden? After the Ferelden Circle, I thought all mages were like the ones there. Knight Commander Meredith's methods were harsh, but they kept people safe. You said Meredith was unstable. She was my Knight Commander. I had no reason to distrust her. She wasn't wrong about the Blood Mages in Kirkwall. Meredith encouraged my anger towards the Mages. There was only so far I would go, and she knew that too. I was her second in command. She kept decisions from me, those I would question. I believed she was serving the city. I never thought to question her, not until it was too late. You can't control everything. You stood up to her in the end. If I hadn't, would I be like her now? I wanted mages locked away as much as she did. I trusted they were treated reasonably well, but I should have done more. I should have looked into it. It's not yet enough. The Inquisition is my chance to atone. I will see it through. The Inquisition won't last forever. What will you do when this is over? To be honest, I hadn't given it much thought until recently. I'm not used to having so many possibilities. You've mentioned siblings. With everything that's happening, do you know if they're all right? I've received word from my eldest sister. She was always good at tracking me down. South Reach has experienced the same chaos as everywhere else. My family is fine. Pray they remain so. Your sister tracked you down. She didn't know where you were. I let her know I was in Haven. She assumed I survived. It's not the first time. I may have neglected to tell her when I was transferred to Kirkwall. Why? I wasn't in a good state. I wanted only to leave. I received an angry letter about my disappearance two years later. For all her reprimands, it was a relief to hear from someone who knew me before the Blight. That's all I wanted to know. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. Did you need something? May I ask you something? Of course. If you don't mind my asking, the hero of Ferelden was a circle mage. Did you know her? I attended her harrowing, actually. She was a lovely woman. Lovely? There was some youthful infatuation on my part. I found her... compelling. You never acted on it? She was one of my charges. Even if she felt the same, it would have been inappropriate. I saw her once after she became a warden. She freed the tower during the blight. I would be dead or mad if not for her. I was in a sorry state when she found me. The things I said were unkind, untoward. I regret them now. I wish she knew that. That's all I wanted to know. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. Yes. I want to show Sarah how I feel, but can't think of the right gift. Ideas? You and Sarah? 
<laughs> That's a tricky one, actually. It's hard to know what she wants without knowing who she is. You should... You should give her something you think she might like. Doesn't help, I know. Good luck. Nothing right now. Perhaps in a bit. Here we are again. I'm looking for ideas for something to give Sarah, to show her I'm serious. Right. You want the lover's red. Nestle a Feltamont rose to your heart and take it to the west peak of Mount Azazet. As dawn breaks, bare your chest. Nine seconds of that cold sun will tease the petals to the color of love's first blush. Is... Is that a thing? No. Complete nonsense. As is trying to please that imp with any material gift. Good luck, Inquisitor. It's not a hunt I'd bet on. Inquisitor. I want to show Sarah how I feel. Any suggestions for a good gift? You and... I see. You won't help? I can't. The way she's been raised, she's no more of an elf than I am a horse. I have no insight in what she could want. Something human and fleeting, no doubt. Far be it for me to suggest a training adjustment. I always have time for you, my dear. I want to show Sarah I'm serious about her. Any ideas about a gift that would say it? Oh, for... Seriously. This is why you've bothered me. Just shave something rude into your privates, dear. She won't get the redundancy. Are you sure? <laughs> Anything is worth considering. Of course, my dear. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm doing anything else. What can I do for you, your inquisitorialness? I want to give Sarah a gift to show her how I feel. Any suggestions? You and Sarah, huh? Good one. That'll make some eyes twitch. A gift, though. Oh, tricky business. Is it too obscure? Is it too on the nose? Will it be taken as intended? Oh, it's a pain in the ass. I, I wouldn't worry about it. If there's something she wants, she'll say. Well, Sarah's not big on subtext. No footnotes or, you know, really words of any sort. I trust all is well. I want to give Sarah a gift that shows I'm serious about her. Any idea what she would like? You, our herald, and... Sarah? Ah, oh, you certainly go out of your way to make things difficult, don't you? I've no suggestions. At least none she would willingly accept, such as gaining purpose, or an actual profession. If there's nothing else, I'll get back to work. She knows they're going to kill her can only save what's important, precious space to remember her smile. May I ask how things are, now that you're more of a spirit? Questions can be shackles, but you kept me in kindness. I will answer. Can you tell me more about what happened at the Spire, you and the real Cole? I don't remember. I let that go. It isn't part of me anymore. You don't mind killing people, even being more of a spirit? Monsters are easy, mindless, menacing. It's harder when it's people. Venatory, bandits. People who could change, but they chose. They hurt people. We need to stop them. My blades are yours to command. I forget later. So it washes clean. What is it like to be this way? I'm me. More me than I was. I can care and comfort, but keep clean. No shackles. They feel, forgive, forget, and I am free. Finally. Thank you. Can you tell me more about the Fade, now that you're more connected to it? It is here, but held. 
constrained by a construct, veiled. Feelings, memories, minds, mortality, all shape it. A glass to hold water. We flow to the deep. Without you, we have nothing. Not even us. That's why we want so much. I'll talk to you later. Yes. Copper on the lips. Dalish lies dead-eyed beside me. He'll come. He'll call. He won't leave us. Horns pointing up. I want to show Sarah how I feel. You have a... different perspective. Any ideas on what to get her? A gift that means feelings. So it's something it isn't. I don't think that works outside the Fade. Or in it. Don't give her a gift in the Fade. That would go very bad. She would make it very bad. I'm not much help. Sorry. Hi, Cheatness. What's going on? What is this? You look serious. Am I supposed to get you something? Because I need more to go on. What are you talking about? You gave me a gift. Sort of. I asked everyone and still don't know what to get you in return. Wait, wait, wait. You went to everyone and said I was your lover. Right to their faces. They must have... Oh, Vivian must have puckered pinky tight. Best gift ever. I'm the Inquisitor. I could get you anything. But I don't want the Inquisitor to use Inquisitor powers to inquisit everything I want. Sounds a bit too nobly, doesn't it? Besides, I'm grateful now. You'd still rather go shopping? <laughs> I can't believe you shaved that in your... <laughs> Andraste's Herald is touched, all right. That is. <laughs> it's sort of... Well, it represents how we came together, I think. I'll show you coming together. Unexpected pleasure. You must have had a long journey to the city. Might there be any news from this house? Here's a letter from Ellerly. He's safe with his family in the Dales. Oh, my Ellerly. Oh, bless you. The Dions will sponsor the Duparakets as a family deserving of a noble title, Inquisitor. You have my word. Now, please forgive my hastiness. But I must read Ellery's words. Make her keep you. Thank you for seeing me in private, Minister Belize. I chastise you for taking me from the party, Inquisitor, but the Marquis throws such dull affairs, it's hardly worth it. I assume you wish to discuss your petition to elevate these du paraquettes to a minor lordship. Tell me, why should I allow you to pollute the Orlesian nobility any further than it's already been muddled? You don't think much of the current Orlesian nobility? I do not. It is a watered-down shadow of its former glory, degraded by a mongrel mix of tradesmen and merchants. 
Really, it is too much. The very thought causes me pain. What can you possibly provide that will make your petition worth my effort? Information. Unless you believe your sources better than agents of the Inquisition. Normally, I wouldn't trust your discretion. But the left hand of the Divine is working for you, is she not? Sister Leliana is a resourceful woman. I could certainly make use of her talents. Very well, Inquisitor. Should you fulfill this bargain, I shall... raise the Duparquettes into lordship. He spent his life in the Circle. Uh, perhaps a tailored coat from Valroyal? <laughs> he can't wear armor all the time. He will appreciate the gesture, Lady Ambassador. That's a polite way of saying he wouldn't like it, isn't it? I must return to Valroyal to see that everything is in order. Please join me when you can. I received a letter from the House of Repose, Your Worship. They acknowledge their contract is null and void. There is no longer a price on my life. They also send their compliments on how handily you dispatched their agent pretending to be the Comte. I'm glad you don't have to live your life looking over your shoulder anymore. I regret we were forced to deal with them. That you are endangered by my part in the game. Did I ever mention I used to be a bard? You were a singer. Bards entertain the Orlesian court. They sing, play music, make charming conversation, and spy. Many young nobles put on a mask and practice playing the game in such a fashion. What made you interested in becoming a bard? I was attending a university in Valroyo when I learned about bards. There was such an air of romance about them. Stories of secrets, trysts, and fascinating people. A group of us, young gentry from Antiva, decided this exciting life was for us. Uh, how did you go from being a wandering singer to an ambassador? In a very sad fashion. During one particular intrigue, I encountered a bard sent to kill my patron. We fought. Or perhaps scrapped is the better word. Both of us terrified. We were at the top of a steep flight of stairs. The other bard threw a knife, and I pushed him away from me. You can imagine the result. You were only defending yourself. But it was such a waste, Inquisitor. When I took off his mask, I knew him. We'd attended parties together. If I'd stopped to reason, if I'd used my voice instead of scuffling like a common thug, I'll always wonder who that young man would have grown into. From bard to diplomat is quite a change in direction. I was headed down that path for some time already. That night merely crystallized it. In all the commotion... Uh, forgive me, I don't believe I ever thanked you for helping me with this. Your skills truly benefit the Inquisition. We wouldn't want to lose you. Well, House Montillier will always be grateful to you. And should you ever visit Antiva, stories of the welcome we'll give you will be told for years. <laughs>